If you were the computer and you were walking down this array and you can only see a single item at a time, what could you know? If you contemplate that as we walk through a simple example together, you can discover the simplest and fastest algorithm for maximum subarray sum yourself. At first, you only see this one item. Okay, so that's the maximum subarray. Moving on, we see this next item. Now that cannot possibly be the maximum subarray sum. And if I add that to the previous max, I get a max sum that's even worse than what we already had. So there's not much to do here. Moving on, I see a 1. Now this 1 is not the new max, and if I add it to the previous item, still not a new max. However, this 1 could be the start of something that eventually sums to the new max. So I'm going to keep a variable called ongoing sum to track the sum that I have going right now that could eventually become the new max. Next item, I see another 1. Now it's still not a new max, but I add that to the ongoing sum, and I move on one more item. Then I see another 1. I add it to the ongoing max. Now the ongoing max is bigger than the previous max, so the ongoing max becomes the new max. Next item, I see a negative 7, and I add that to the ongoing sum to get negative 4. Not likely to be useful, and certainly not going to be the max, but let's keep going. I see a 1 next. Now, we could add this to the ongoing sum, getting a negative 3. But if we only care about finding the maximum possible sum, wouldn't any ongoing sum just be better starting anew from that 1 and not including the negative value preceding it? Yes, it would. So we're just going to set ongoing sum to 1, basically starting a new ongoing sum from that point onwards. Now let me ask, how exactly did I know that I should start a new ongoing sum from that point? I know because 1 is bigger than what I would get from adding 1 to the previous ongoing sum. To be precise, if the current item is bigger than what I would get from taking the current item and adding that to the ongoing sum, then I just set ongoing sum to be that current item. Here's the code. It's called Cadane's algorithm because it was invented by a man named J. Cadane. The key points are on lines 4 and 5. On line 4, if the current number is bigger than the current number plus the ongoing sum, then the ongoing sum just becomes the current number. Then on line 5, the max is equal to either the ongoing sum or the old max, whichever's bigger. What's the time complexity here? Yeah, this is just linear. It's O of N far better than any of the other approaches, and also much simpler code.